Did you know Bangalore was the first city in India to receive electricity? Guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm at a very special place. Um, in front of a very special building. Behind me is the Vidhan Sauda of Bangalore, which is one of the most iconic destinations if you visit Bangalore. It's like a must-visit place if you're here. And getting a photo click, it will stay in your memories as well as your photo album in your phones forever. So behind me, right over here, is the High Court of Karnataka. And before this part of the video started, I tried to show few glimpses of how much ever I've seen in Bangalore, the main central part of Bangalore. I hope you enjoyed that part. And um, coming to the video, what is this video about today? And why am I in front of Vidhan Sada? You may ask. I'll give you the answer. Today, I'm here to share some facts about Bangalore, which are not that much known. Like, um, I'll tell that in the video what I'm talking about. So, without any further ado, let's begin and watch the video till the end if you want to find out more about these facts and what I'm here for. Let's get started. Fact number one. We all are aware that Bangalore is known as the Silicon Valley of India. But did you know there are 212 software companies which are located in the heart of Bangalore? Yes, you heard it right. 212. Another thing, we all know Bang uh, Bangalore is the garden city of India, or at least according to few people was, but still we have a lot of greenery around here. And Bangalore would also have been called as the lake city of India. You know why? Because the city was planned so beautifully by the founder of Bangalore, Kempe Gowda I, that it would surely be called the lake city. But unfortunately, due to the developmental processes going on throughout Bangalore, many of the lakes have dried up. In fact, the stadium, the hockey stadium, the majestic bus station, everything was a lake. And after its drying down, it was converted into different stations. Now, do you like a good bargain? I know the right place where you can go if you want an awesome bargain in Bangalore. Just head to the Chickpet market, right? You can get varieties of sarees at wholesale price. And also, not only sarees, you will get beautiful lights there. Oh, speaking of lights, did you know Bangalore was the first city in India to receive electricity? Yes, in the year 1905, Bangalore was the first city in India to receive electricity. And RKR Market Building was the first recipient of this electricity. Oh, speaking about environment conversation things, did you know in the year 1906, Bangalore received the first hydro-powered electricity? Yes, there was a hydro-power plant located in Shivasamudram, which is a tourist location in Bangalore and we all head there for weekends and stuff not very far to Bangalore. There, there was a hydropower electric plant from where Bangalore got its electric power, water powered electricity. Bangalore is also a hub for education. There are various famous institutes of India established here in Bangalore, like the Indian Institute of Science, Indian Institute of Management, as well as the Christ University. Also, there are a lot of military areas in Bangalore and Bangalore is also home to one of the oldest or many old military regiments in India. Speaking of the military, did you know there's a weapon named after R. Bengaluru, which was invented by uh, Sir R. L. McClintock? Yes, it was called the Bangalore Torpedo, which helped in the war and was a missile kind of thing. 
speaking about garden city lal bag is spread over a huge land area and kaban park is spread about 300 acres on the heart of the city speaking of lal bag a thing just clicked my mind do you know mtr the mavali tiffin rooms because there's an interesting story connected to them as well during the second world war when mtr had to prepare at least for the people they were running short on rice you know what they did that time they got a genius idea in their mind and used rava which is semolina sulji for making idlis yes you heard it right it was during the second world war when idli was invented in bangalore um uh, not idli rava idli and from then onwards rava idli is very popular and one of the most eaten things in south india and now you get it in almost all the states of south india also in some parts of india and some places abroad bangalore and traffic two words which seem to be in love with each other But do you know once traffic was celebrated in Bangalore in the year 2005 when the LET terrorist group had planned a terror attack in Bangalore and had succeeded to do a bombing in IISC yes the Indian Institute of Science they had planned other places to bomb first they planned to go to La Meridian hotel but due to poor planning and execution they couldn't bomb there then they went to the PS Institute of Technology in Hoskerhalli to do a bombing there as well but because there was no escape route there they left that Then finally, they decided to do it at IIM, the Indian Institute of Management. I just spoke about some minutes ago. Yes, they decided to do it there. But you know how people over there were saved because of the infamous traffic of Namma Bengaluru. Yeah, it was because of the traffic they could never make it there, and the ATS caught them. Now, I hope everyone's aware of R K Narayan's infamous Malgudi days. Okay, if you aren't, go check it out ASAP. But if you are, you know where the name Malgudi came from? It came from two places in Bangalore. One part of the name came from Maleshwaram, the M A L from Maleshwaram, and the G U D I from Baswan Gudi. R K Narayan mentioned that he liked these two places so much that he named his infamous stories and books after this. Hence, Malgudi was named using the M A L of Maleshwaram and G U D I of Baswan Gudi. Also. Did you know that the Trinity Circle was considered as the end of Bangalore? Um, that was long ago, but now we know where Bangalore goes till. And before the weather forecasts were given, just of the Bangalore city and the Bangalore airport, and nothing beyond that, because nothing beyond that was considered as Bangalore. Did you know Bangalore is a very religiously and culturally diverse city, with over 1,000 temples, 400 mosques, 100 churches, and as well. Three gurudwars, two Buddhist viharas, and a fire temple as well. You can think of all the diversity you can get in Bangalore. It's a very culturally diverse place. Did you know the former UK PM Winston Churchill was a member of the Bangalore Club? It's a very famous club here. And at that time, and still, he owes thirteen rupees to the Bangalore Club. Now it might seem that thirteen rupees—it's so less. What about that? But in those days, thirteen rupees was a lot. Speaking of the olden times, did you know that Bangalore has the highest number of Nobel Prize nominees? Yes, the highest number of Nobel Prize nominees comes from Bangalore. Now we all love cartoons, don't we? At least at a time you did like. But did you know Bangalore is the only city in India that houses the Cartoon Gallery? which exhibits the work of various cartoonists throughout our country and this is hosted by the Indian Institute of Cartoonists also the oldest radio club of our country is here in Bangalore the amateur radio club which was established in the year 1959 Bangalore is a vegan friendly city in fact you can find many vegan restaurants around Bangalore also there's a festival of literature which goes on in Bangalore and was started in the year 2012 Bangalore is the rock capital of India. At the beginning I did tell you that it was the pub capital, right? So not only pub, the music in Bangalore is also very famous. There are various bands which come from various places to perform here in Bangalore. Also Bangalore is the super car capital of India as well. God knows what else is like what else is capital is Bangalore, but um, it is the super car capital of India. In fact, on my way to the Vidhan Sabha, I did see couple of cars. ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೆ ಕನ್ನಡ ಕಲ್ಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲಿವಿಂ
Did you know only 41% of Bangalore's population are consist of local Kannada guys? Yes. The rest are from different parts of the country or different states here and there or from different countries. But we all should be promoting the Kannada language. We all should learn this language because we are living in a place where this language is loved by the people. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you liked it. And click on the bell icon when you subscribe to my channel because I don't want you to miss any of my videos. And if you do that, you'll receive notifications whenever I post any new video. That is it for today, guys. Um, so this video is something I wanted to do for a long time, and it helped me know a lot of things about my city. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's it for today. Bye. See you in the next one.